John Planner with the Mojave Valley Daily News, and this is our Valley Voices. Uh, today brought to you by the Tri-State AC Hero. They would like to, you know some about Tri-State AC Hero, right? Ah, uh, I think I know a few people over there. They would like to thank their customers for naming them Best Heating and Air Conditioning Company in the Mojave Valley Daily News Best Of for three years in a row. So. And they definitely are the best. They're awesome, that's for sure. And we, we appreciate them sponsoring this. I have the great pleasure of sitting down for Valley Voices this week with my friend, um, Clay Parker. Your friend? Yeah. Don't, I finally don't earned let, that status. Don't, don't let that go to your head. I finally earned that status. It's only taken five years. Clay is, uh, he works for Totally Awesome Printing, but he is with the Kiwanis Club of the Colorado River. Uh, they're the people that are putting on Corn Fest. Um, he is the co-chair of Corn Fest, and he's with the Bullhead Business Builders, and he is with the Chamber of Commerce, and he's got a pile of things going on. But today, we're here to talk about Corn Fest. Right. Which is, uh, this airs on Friday, so it starts tonight. 5 p.m., doors open, Kid Nick take the stage at 6. Um, 2020 Corn Fest brought, uh, presented by Living Waters Hospice and host hosted by Kiwanis of the Colorado River. So thank you very much, Living Waters Hospice. This is our fourth year putting it on. It's been their fourth year um, as our presenting sponsor of the event. So thank you very much to them. And you mentioned Tri-State AC Hero. They're also another major sponsor of the Corn Fest as well. The famous, infamous as I like to call it, 10,000 square foot Scream in the Dark Haunted House, which will be running um, Friday and Saturday at the Corn Fest, as well as Tuesday the 27th, Friday the 30th, and at our Trunk and Treat, on Halloween night. So um, Tri-State AC Hero pitched in a bunch and is to get that off the ground this year. All right, there, now that he got his spiel out of the way, let's okay. ask him some real questions. So tell us about the Parade of Lights. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I told him that I went, uh, <laughs> I told him that I went to touch that. That is something that after Corn Fest is over, we'll start uh, we'll start addressing that. But Good, because I do not want to have to smack you on camera. <laughs> it's the same club. This is what I want to start off with. This is a press release that we got last night. It's on our website. Uh, didn't make it into the paper today. I'm, I believe it'll probably be in tomorrow. But um, the year after year, Corn Fest has a beer garden. Um, and with COVID and everything, the state has kind of shut down the liquor licenses this year. Um, they were denied the liquor license, and so they thought that they would, uh, you guys believe that you could do it another way. The liquor board stepped in and said, no, you're not. And so it is BYOB. That is correct. Um, it's, it's been a battle. It's been a challenge. Um, we did our best to wait as long as we could to make the call on the event to, because, I mean, July it wasn't even possible to put on this event. But, but we waited it out and we did the same exact thing with the liquor. Um, that's why we haven't really promoted much with the beer garden at all. Because uh, we knew at the time that the liquor licenses were not being issued. And uh, it's due to the governor's order, which, which we understand. So we knew we would not be able to serve or sell alcohol. So one of the other plans that we had is we go, okay, we were gonna offer free beer. We were just gonna buy 150 cases and have it in the beer garden and that actually turns out, I guess, to be illegal <laughs> distribution of alcohol, and I'm not in the mood to be, you know, jailed, have, have, fined yeah, and jailed. Yeah, have, have us charged with 4,500 counts of um, illegal distribution of alcohol. So um, we spoke to the liquor board yesterday, and they said that if Gary Keith Park is classified as a public recreational facility, which it is, and the city city ordinances allow them, um, the community to bring alcohol into the park, which they do then we can have alcohol. You know, that's the way they can do it. They can be bring their own beer. Right. Biggest thing, and I would like to get this out there, please, 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 no glass. Yeah. Uh, glass, um, glass containers are not allowed at the park. So if, you see, if we see them, you know, we will ask you to throw them away immediately. So. Yeah, and that's what I think a lot of people don't understand is that community park and the beaches and uh, Rotary Park and, and all the city parks you're allowed to have alcohol in there. You're Correct. allowed to bring bring beer. You're not allowed to bring glass containers. Everything has to be, uh, you know, it's in plastic or or in cans. But um, so 
people for the event for for the event this weekend for Cornfest, they're allowed to bring beer from home or from the store or whatever in there, um, bring their own coolers in there, walk around and, and enjoy the festivities. That, that's correct. And there will be places that we ask you not to take it. Um, you'll see no alcohol. Obviously, um, any places that it's is set up for the kids, such as Scream in the Dark Haunted House, um, our kids zone by the bouncy houses. It's both of those areas are, you know, the Scream in the Dark's under a tent. And so you will not be able to allow, allowed to have alcohol with, you know, in that tent or, and the kids zone is actually roped off and you will not be allowed to have alcohol in there. Um, you know, one of the concerns when we put this out yesterday that a few people online had reached out, you know, they're a little worried about underage. Um, please know if we will be carding. Um, if we see you with the beer in your hand and you appear to be underage, we will be asking you for your ID because that's one very important thing is we want to make sure that um, it's done legally. Right. So while you're allowed to bring your own beer into the park, you're still not allowed to underage drink in the park. That is correct. <laughs> this is your event. You have to provide the security for it. You're going to have a security crew out there as well. Oh, uh, correct. Our our entire our entire Kiwanis group will be out there um, in full force and just doing everything that we can to make sure that that part of the event goes as smooth and with as possible without incident. All right. So let's talk about some of the events. Um, that you've got going on there. Uh, let's start with vendors. Um, you've got a pile of vendors that I was talking to. My wife Maria handles the, handles the vendors and, and apparently they've got some massive amount, 60 something or, or whatever vendors. Last I heard, 39, I do believe it's 39 vendors taking up um, over 50 spots. So. Some of them had multiple spots. Yeah, I know we had one guy with the trailer who bought like seven spots. So. so that's going to be big. You have the Kids Zone. Yes. Who's your Kids Zone sponsor? Um, Kids Zone sponsor is Redman Construction. Um, he, he just jumped in on that, so thank you very much, Butch. We appreciate that. Um, Crazy K's is providing a bunch of bouncy houses. Um, I still don't know the exact number. I just showed him the area that he has, and he goes, I'm going to fill it. So I know that we got a bunch of bouncy houses coming in. Um, should be in there tomorrow. Um, I do believe one of the ones he's bringing is a really, really large dry slide that stands 22 foot tall. So that one should be fun. Kids only. Until during after the hours. Event. <laughs> during the event. Great. All right, I'll meet you there. <laughs> I, 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 cannot, I cannot say that, our, that some of us will not have a you know, head first dive down the slide contest after, after the event's over. Right. I, I can't guarantee that. <laughs> that's, that's if you know the history of Cornfest. That is the history of Cornfest. Once the gates aren't closed and the vent is shut down, the Kwanians uh, tend to get after it a little bit. Um, you're gonna have the pumpkin patch again this year. Yeah, pumpkin patch is a lot smaller. Before we used to order about 500 or three to 500 pumpkins, and we wound up giving them away at the end of the night. Um, so this year we're only ordering 100, and uh, they will be available for. Oh, geez, no, I, I, he just changed it on me yesterday. I do believe it's five tickets or, or five dollars each, and that'll be located pretty much right in the south east corner of the park by the red vendor tent, or I mean by the red food tent. And um, so it's a little smaller. We got a hundred of them, but yes, we will have our pumpkin patch. And that's more of a photo op than anything else. Right? A photo op, but you can also buy the pumpkins. I mean, we're getting close to uh, you know we're a week away from Halloween, and you know this is when people are out looking for pumpkins. So come on out because all that money does go to a charity. So. Um, you know, not to, not to say don't go to a store and buy one, but, you know, come on over and buy one from us and the money goes to charity. All right. You have, you have, for the first time ever, um, the root beer garden. Root yes. beer garden. So, we can't have the beer garden, as, as we told you. So, we came up with the idea yesterday, and I don't know that I'm going to go change all the beer garden signs and write in root. <laughs> but um, we decided, okay, we can't sell beer, so we're gonna sell root beer. Root beer floats will be available at the main, um, the main food cart where we're doing the corn and the um, pizza as well. Vito's will be supplying the pizza again this year, so thank you, Vito's, for that. And we're we're still working out the kinks of that. Um, that'll probably conversation will take place in our afternoon Qantas meeting of exactly how we're gonna pull that off. But yeah, we're, we're going to be doing root beer floats. 
Okay, we got a few more things to talk about, and I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, the food garden, and I want to get to the haunted house. The, what is it? The scream in the, scream dark, in the dark haunted house. Uh, we'll get to that, but first we want to talk about our sponsor again, Tri-State AC Hero has recently been named the best heating and air conditioning company by the readers of the Mojave Valley Daily News for the third straight year. With 24-7 emergency service offered, the family-owned business is here to help. Tri-State AC Hero strives to make sure that customers are always given options when it comes to replacing or repairing a unit. They are not looking to make a fast dollar, but instead provide trustworthy service and build loyal customer relationships, whether it's a residential, commercial, or refrigeration job. Right now, you can get $500 off a new install. They also have a summer maintenance special for just $79, but I think that I think that actually expired now. What doesn't expire is their $78 diagnostic fee, which will be waived if you choose to have the repairs done at the time of service during normal business hours. And remember, they always give a 10% discount to military, first responders, teachers, and senior citizens. Yeah, you got a ways to go yet, Clay. You're almost there. I'm very <laughs> knocking on the door. <laughs> so for repairs, new installations, or periodic preventative maintenance, call 928-444-4395 and give Tri-State AC Hero a try. See why they were named the best heating and air conditioning company for the third year in a row. Give Rusty a call. Huh? Definitely. He's a good right. guy. He has a great team. He really does. I was speaking with him um, a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about what... Uh, how his company has gone and he was telling me that in 2017 he started it and it was him mm -hmm. alone and uh, I don't remember what the dollar amount but it was less than a hundred thousand dollars that he did that year he now has 20 installers mm -hmm. and he's doing over a million dollars a year um, and that just goes to show if you if you are you know a reputable person with integrity and you you serve the customers well you're going to do well in this community, that's for sure. Exactly. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the food about, about the food area. Who all do you have in the... Okay. Who's all coming? Excuse me while I look up my notes here, because I have 100,000 yeah. things going through my head, and I'm almost a senior citizen, so... <laughs> Robert you know. Hazelgrove is your chair <laughs> for that, right? Yeah, Robert Hazelgrove at Drifting Bistro. Bistro. Uh, great guy. It's his, it is his fourth year... Um, oops, sorry, wrong screen here, one second. Um, it is his fourth year of helping us out and organizing out the food vendors. So we'll have Drifting Bistro there. Um, the Kiwanis Morning Club, they will be there as well selling uh, hot dogs and cotton candy. We do have a guy coming in to do funnel cakes. Um, he was set up last year, it, it was great. He, he never had less than 20 people in line. Yeah. And he sold I, out. That guy was- so popular. Yeah, it, it, was, it was fantastic. We'll have a popcorn vendor. Uh, Kona Ice, Brooke will be bringing out one of her trucks out there, so we'll have the shaved ice and the snow cones from her. And uh, we did just a couple days ago find a local guy to do fry bread. So oh. we are going to have fry bread this year, so we're excited about that. Um, ROTC will be out there selling water. They're also helping us out with parking. So the $1 that you guys pay for parking, well, that does go to ROTC. So um, it's, it's, it's not going to us, it's going directly to them. So they'll be out there selling water, and I think there's a couple of the other vendors that will have some baked goods out there. That's well. excellent. Such good food out there. Uh, I love. I love going. It's like a county fair when you go out to the food. Exactly. Food out there. I try to. St I, I try to stay away from that part. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> well, you know, I asked him for a Dr Pepper, and he got me a diet. I asked him if he was trying to tell me something. So. It's, it's my. Uh, uh, passive aggressive side right there that's All right. what friends do the best part in my opinion mm -hmm. of the corn fest over the last few years has been the scream in the dark that's everybody's um, and it has turned into your biggest fundraiser part of of the of the event correct other than maybe sponsorship but but as far as what makes the most money for for Kiwanis mm -hmm. money raised actually last year the scream in the dark haunted house brought in more than selling beer which is it's it's phenomenal. Funny. It really is. Um, I think I think the success and correct me if I'm wrong. The success of the scream in the dark, uh, in my opinion, can be attributed to you have a complete psycho running that. Oh my gosh, he's Dennis nuts. Moyer. Dennis is Dennis is phenomenal. So here's how this here here's how this went down. If I got a minute to tell you this, the very very first year we we try it was we we tried to throw it together. 
and um, it really, I mean, it, it was good, but last minute we're trying to put everything together. There wasn't the plan in the maps, and I knew Dennis liked to do haunted houses, so I called him, I'm like, okay, we need your help bad. So he comes down and he, he just, I mean, he brought his vortex um, down and his, all of his props and everything else. So the next year we're like, okay, you know, why don't you design it? And he, I'm going to call it a maze and he's going to yell at me, but he has designed probably the best mazes over the last two years and even a bigger one this year. And it's really, really taken off. Um, I mean, you get, the tents went up last Friday and they just yesterday finished building the, finished building the set for it. Yeah. It, 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 you can call it a maze. It really is just, I mean, there's walls up to kind of guide you through mm -hmm. all the areas, kind of points you, makes you go past areas that are going to make you scream and jump and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I know that I've worked with him on a couple of things this year that, that we're very excited about, things that are going to uh, go bump in the night. So um, if you sure. like haunted houses, if your kids like haunted houses down to a certain age, do you, are you guys saying cutting them off at any certain age or do you make a recommendation? Or I don't really make a recommendation. Um, to, to, to us, that's sort of up to the parents, but I will put this out. It's scary. It is scary. Uh, and it is meant to scare you. Uh, that is the whole point. But if your kids would like to experience the haunted house in a non-scary format, from three to five on Saturday during Cornfest, the monsters, everyone else, the actors will all be there. Um, it'll be daylight out, so the haunt won't be dark. And we are actually going to let kids trick or treat through. So the monsters, instead of scaring you, will be handing out candy. We'll have bags that are being donated by Totally Awesome Bernie for that. And um, it, the cost the cost to go through the haunt when it's scary is five is five dollars or five tickets during the event. The other nights it'll be five dollars. For for this it's three and parents accompany them are free so it's just three per child. And yeah, so you have the ability to experience it in a non-scary format if you want, but when it, when it gets dark, it gets scary. I can yeah, tell you that right now. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> I'm very excited about it and it'll be so much fun. So all the money raised uh, at the Corn Fest are used by the Kiwanis to support a number of local projects such as the Gary Keith Civic Center Park, you guys Correct. have dumped a lot of money into that. Uh, scholarships for area students, grants for area teachers. Um, really, Kiwanis is all about the youth. That is so correct. it's a variety of different youth things within the community. So um, remember that when you go down there and, and you spend your money, that all that money that you're spending goes back into the children, children's programs and children related things in the community. So what are your hours? Hours, 5 to 10 Friday, 10 to 10 on Saturday. That's uh, 23rd and 24th. So um, come on out. Have a great time with your family. Um, to touch on what you said, because I know that there, um, to clear up another thing that we had, we had seen online, um, the city doesn't put on this event. Our Kiwanis Club does. Um, the money for this event is a fundraiser. It allows us to be able to do things like the Easter egg hunt, which is a free event. The trunk or treat that we're putting on at the same place on Halloween night. Um, those are all events that our Kiwanis Club pays for out of our club money for the community. And it's events like Corn Fest that allows us to be able to do those things throughout the year. Right, and Kiwanis is no different than any other community organization or business. They've been hit hard by COVID. Some, a lot of their, I know that you had a off-road rally that had to be canceled. You had some other events that had to be canceled that you used to raise money. So this is really the first one in our community, but the first one for sure for Kiwanis in our community where you've been able to raise some money to go back and, and pick up uh, scholarships and, and some of those other things. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um, can I touch on a couple nope, other things sorry. we got going on? Nope. Okay, good. All right, go I'll ahead. I'll shut up now. No, please, go ahead. You want the camera. You know? <laughs> it's... Okay. Um, some of the other things that we got going on, um, Friends of Havasire Renaissance team, they were out there last year, and um, they actually had last year to where they got, the kids can take a sword and whack a knight um, with it. This year, they're going to be sh um, shooting Nerf arrows at them. So, and that's actually a game and a fundraiser for them. So that, that's going to be a lot of fun. Another thing I told them, I, they asked me if we can do it. I said under one condition. 
You know what? I said that you leave the bow and arrow so that after hours in our Kiwanis party, <laughs> we could idea. drive around in the golf carts and shoot each other with them. Yeah, I, don't I don't know that that's going to happen, but if you see that going on at the park, that's all that's going on. Kind of a Mad Max kind of thing going on. <laughs> exactly. And um, AAU is back for the third year now with their strongman competition. They're going to be doing a truck lift, a truck pull, and a bunch of stuff. That's going to be going on on Saturday. Um, all of this information is available on our website. I think I'm, I think I'm ready for the truck lift. What my, happened there? My back hurts. Oh. Did you get stung by a bee? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so AAU will be out there. Um, on the website, just look at AAU Strongman. It has the lineup and the times of every single one of their events. I know, I didn't shave. I've been, I'm sorry, I've been sleeping in a fifth wheel at the park since Monday. So John's picking on me because I'm... In a van by the river. Yeah, in a van by the river. So, but um, yeah, those are two other things we've got going on. Game boost as well. Uh, every one of the game boosts ran is a fundraiser for the group that's running it. I know we got River Valley Devils um, w running one. We have a cheer com competition running one. Um, I, a couple of others, I'd, I'd have to look them up. But every single one of those game boosts is a fundraiser for that particular group. 90% of everything that is brought in from that goes directly to that group. Million things going on out there. I'm 150 gonna kick, moving parts. I'm going to kick Clay out of here so he can get back over there to help get it uh, finished setting up. Thank you, Clay, for coming down. I appreciate it. Thank that. you, my friend. <laughs> and thanks to our sponsor, Tri-State AC Hero. Call them today at 928-444-4395 and find out why they were voted Best Heating and Air Conditioning Company by the readers of the Mojave Valley Daily News for the third year in a row. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. If you're, uh, please... Look below the video here and, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell. I keep saying it's an apple or a pear or whatever. It's a bell, apparently. Apple, bear, bell, pear, they all look the same. Right? right? Thank you, <laughs> my friend. Click on that and that will give you a push notification. So anytime one of our videos come up, you can uh, it will alert you that we're about to do something silly. So thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.